So when they did the series, they took parts from Cranford and they took parts from My Lady Ludlow and made her a character that was like she owned the land on which Cranford was. Um, Doctor, oh, the Confessions of Doctor Harrison, who in the the miniseries becomes sort of a central character, and um, I think one other book that was a nonfiction book about England during this time about the industrialization of England, specifically uh, Manchester, that was a huge industrialized uh, zone, a big industrial town uh, during. Elizabeth Gaskell's life and bringing in the railroad and all the things that happened because of that. Um, but the book had some problems, certainly. Uh, I think at its core it was sort of an interesting idea. There's this sort of metafiction of the story being told um, as it took place when the narrator was a a male, uh, what do you call him? A handmaiden, something like that. She she worked uh, at My Lady Ludlow's house at her estate, um, and then My Lady Ludlow tells this story about um, another servant she had who was French, and it just goes into this long rambling story about the French Revolution and why peasants should not be educated, why they shouldn't learn to read, because if they do, then eventually you're going to lead to the French Revolution and everyone's going to die. And it's... that story is interesting, but um, really she could have just had that as a short story instead of all this stuff around it that is not particularly interesting. Um, so I, I think that they did a really good job with the miniseries by incorporating that into it. Uh, the last one is um, this huge universe called Dungeon um, that was created by Joanne Sfar and Louis Trondheim, who I think he might be Belgian. I'm not sure where he's from. Um, but Joanne Sfar is a... French writer, artist, and they basically have taken all these fantasy, science fiction, but mostly fantasy tropes, and they've turned it into this long series of stories um, about uh, this dungeon where the two major characters, uh, Herbert, who's a duck, and Marvin the Red, who is this dragon warrior who are best friends, live and it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons. There's this guy who owns this dungeon and they attract uh, swords for hire and adventurers, whatever, to go into the dungeon and uh, try and fight monsters, but it's sort of like a carnival act in that most hardly any of them make their way out because it's a dungeon and the monsters are too difficult, so they get a lot of money because they get people to pay to go into it. Um, and that is the basic thing. And then there's the world all around the dungeon. Um, so there's several different um, side or sub-stories within it. Uh, there's earlier ones where the master of the dungeon, Hyacinth, is a young man and him growing up and um, like becoming really disenchanted with the world and eventually taking over the dungeon and then there's the introduction of Herbert and Marvin and that's uh, I'm trying to... Uh, Dungeon Zenith I think and there's Dungeon uh, Twilight which is after the dungeon's been destroyed and uh, there's a new Marvin the Red, who is a rabbit, uh, who's filed his teeth into these giant ridiculous points, and he wanders around in this super-powered armor with um, Marvin uh, the Red, the old Marvin the Red, who, for whatever reason, is turned into this greenish-white 
old man, and uh, he's become the mentor of the new Marvin the Red, the rabbit, and they're just wandering around the land, um, mostly getting in and out of trouble. And uh, this is Dungeon Monsters, which are side stories about non-main characters. So uh, the main story in this is about this lizard woman assassin who uh, Hyacinth was in love with when he was a young man. And um, he has this love-hate relationship with because she seems to love him, but she's an assassin and doesn't seem to have a whole lot of loyalty. So it's her telling her story from her growing up as a girl and just her survival, trying to survive in this patriarchal society and then joining this assassin league and uh, everything up until after she leaves Hyacinth. And... Uh, there's two other stories. The one that I remember takes place under the water, and it's about um, uh, Herbert in Dungeon Twilight has become this evil megalomaniac sorcerer, and he's sort of taken over a lot of the land, and uh, his troops have gone under the water to try and take over that, but... Uh, they're meeting some resistance from resistance from some people, so that story is from the perspective of this girl who is living there. She seems like some sort of pampered princess, and she sees basically everyone she knows get murdered, and so she disguises herself as a soldier and goes around with their troop, um, and uh, just interesting but really dark and upsetting. I'm not entirely sure I liked that one. Um, and I, I have that feeling about the, the Dungeon series overall. I find it very interesting and very engaging, but very kind of cynical and, and dark and violent overall. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I, I somewhat recommend that series. Uh, probably the one you would want to pick up that's the most accessible would be Dungeon, uh, the early years, Volume 1, The Nightshirt, uh, which is again about Hyacinth, who is a, I think he's a duck, but he really looks more like a penguin. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's a good one, so you could read that, and that would sort of lead you into the whole universe. Um, and that was January.